I'm Xanderwood. I make indie games and tutorials on game development. I also play your indie games every week on my channel. Make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon so you never miss a video. And a huge shout out to my new channel members and Patreon supporters, Jet Simon, Basic Terror, Enmark Games, Zan, Fuzel CC, James Welsh, Olivia Bernier, Tor Alexanderson, Matt, Fam Van, Amari Lewis, Seth Coble, and Retro Galaxy. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's continue on with our Flappy Bird game. So what I've done in between episodes, which you can change over right now, is I factored in delta time. Um, and this is something that I sometimes forget to do, and it can mess with the performance of games if certain computers or screens run faster than others. So on this event here that says every tick pipes set x to self dot x minus 0.5 I've just changed that to minus dt which stands for delta time and then multiplied by that uh, that by 60 and if you play the game you, you shouldn't see too much in terms of a difference it'll just mean that the pipes come in at the same speed on every single device that anyone might play on and therefore it won't the performance won't be disturbed um, for lack of a better way of putting it, uh, depending on the person's device. Now, the next thing I want to do is add the rotation of the sprite. And I'm just going to draw a face on this guy, just so we can see uh, for demonstration purposes. It's obviously not going to stay like this, um, because we're going to replace this placeholder with artwork. But just for the sake of showing you what we're doing, this will then give us an idea of which direction it's facing in. So on any touch start, we're going to add an action and we're going to say player. We're going to set the angle and we're going to set it at 320 degrees, which is kind of up diagonally to the right. Then I'm going to add an, act an event at the bottom that says system every tick. And then every tick, we're going to rotate the player. So we're going to say player and we're going to rotate clockwise. And this is going to be, again, factoring in delta time like we did before, dt times 60. <clears throat> so he's going to always be rotating to the right, but as we tap, we're going to reset that position to the top. So it's going to look like he's falling every time we're not tapping the screen. So let me just show you what that looks like. So you can see he's kind of looking up, and then as he falls he starts to rotate down. So it kind of looks a little bit nicer. The next thing we need to do is add in the collisions on the pipes. And to do that, we need to go to the pipe sprites that we created, double click into the bottom one, click on frame zero and click on this little triangle here, which shows you the collision boundaries. Just right click on any of the squares and just say set to bounding box. And then all we're gonna do here is we're gonna drop these top two down to the top of the pipe. Which will be 64. Then on the next frame, we're going to do the exact same thing. In fact, if we right click on it and we say guess the polygon shape. Oh, that doesn't really. I don't know how it's not guessing that. But there we go. <clears throat> when you're happy that all your bounding boxes are the exact same uh, size as the sprites themselves. That's all we need to do there. Let's go back to the event sheet, right click and create another group. And we're going to call this one collisions. Add an event and we're going to say player. We're going to say on collision with another object. And we're going to say pipes, but the family pipe. So that could mean either the top or the bottom pipe. Add an action system and we're going to now set the time scale and i'm going to set the time scale to 0 0.5 so this is going to create slow motion so what i want to happen when we hit a pipe is i want everything to slow down eventually we'll, we'll spawn in like a particle effect and then we'll cut to a loose screen which shows them their high score but to start with to make it nice and juicy we're going to add in a slowdown then we're going to say system and we're going to say wait one second and now is a good time to add our second layer so over in the layers objects let's right click insert layer above and i'm going to call this in capitals the fade layer go back to the layout 
it was on the objects layer. We don't want to create it on the objects layer. On layer one, we're going to create the fade layer. Now, on the fade layer, double click and we're going to create a tile background. We're going to set the sprite to 16 by 16 to keep everything nice and small. And we're just going to color it black. And I'm going to drag this over the entire screen. And I'm going to set its opacity to 50%. I'm going to rename it Screen Fade. And I'm going to give it the tween behavior. Now I'm going to go back to the event sheet and I'm going to create my first function. I'm going to add another group. I'm going to call it functions. And I'm going to add an event. Uh, in fact, <clears throat> I'm going to right click and I'm going to add a function. And the function is going to be called fade to black. It's not going to be black. It's going to be kind of 50% black, but fade to black. And then we're going to add the action and we're going to say screen fade. And we are going to tween one property. And that property is going to be the opac <coughs> the opacity. The end value is going to be 50% 50, 50 and the time is going to be 0 0.5 seconds. So when we fade to black, we're going to fade in to 50% opacity, which means that the opacity now on the fade, we need to set it at zero so we can't see it. Let's go ahead and lock the fade layer so we don't tamper with it. And now after that one second, we're going to call that function fade to black, which is going to basically be the fade that we can put the text on that shows them their high score. Let's also then set the time scale of everything. So I can hold down control and drag out a copy. I'm going to set the site, the time scale here to zero. So everything will be effectively paused when we fade to black. In fact, if I do that, we're not going to do the fade in. It's going to stop everything. So we're going to need to wait another 0.5 seconds here. And drag that down. Or, in fact, what would be better is put it in the function itself. So fade 0.5 seconds to 50% opacity. Wait for that to happen, the 0.5 seconds, and then set the time scale to zero. So now if we play, if we hit one of these pipes... We should slow-mo for a second. There we go. And then it'll fade in and stop. However, I don't like the time that's taking to play out. It seems a little bit too slow. Um, and I also don't like the color of the fade. So let's go ahead and make this black. Lock the fade layer, go back to the event sheet, and let's go ahead and change the end value to 70%. And I'm going to change the weight to 0.5 because it's going to be 0.5 is actually going to be one second because we're doing everything at half speed because we set the time scale. Um, and with that in mind, this is now going to need to take 0.25 because again, that's going to be twice as long because the time scale for the entire game is cut in half. So now let's see, that should all be twice as fast and a little bit blacker. There we go. Perfect. I'm going to leave it there. We're getting there. We're going to start adding in scoring in the next episode so we can clock up a point every time we go through one of these uh, pipes. Um, so until then, guys, take care. Thanks for sticking around again if you've made it this far, and I'll see you in the next video.